An onboard charger was the last major piece missing from our circuit, a way to plug our batteries into a wall outlet or a high voltage charger. It took us months to get it. We needed a charger that can handle up to 3300 watts instead of just 1800, even though an American wall outlet would not drive more than 1800. The higher wattage will allow us to use L2 chargers on the road or at home, or an enterprising European could buy the car from us. We found a vendor on AliExpress who sold both the charger we wanted and a J1772 inlet for charging stations, but when we asked for them in the same invoice, they tacked on an extra $100. Dave reached out to folks at EV Parts, and we got pretty far before getting ghosted. Then Dave contacted Deligreen, which was going great until Chinese New Year slowed things down. After the holiday, we were told a charger would be manufactured within 2-3 to three weeks, plus 7-12 to 12 days to ship. But they screwed up and made one that operates on CAN, which won't work for us. That's one theory to explain the delays. The other is that there's an affable but bumbling guy whose job it is to deliver our charger to us. There was a mix-up with the packages, and he unknowingly swapped it for a similar looking package that contained a prototype of a quantum computer that could crack all known encryption methods. Now he's being hunted by a cartel. His car is weaving in and out of lanes in a high-speed car chase, the package sitting on the passenger seat shifting with every swerve. In one of the pursuing cars, a man leads out the window at the last second a bus veers onto the street from the wrong direction, clipping the guy like he's a mirror. Meanwhile, the second pursuing car is getting closer. Suddenly, a young couple with a stroller appears in a crosswalk in front of our hero, and he slams on the brakes. The car skids and turns 90 degrees. The package flies out the window. The wheel comes to a stop inches from the stroller. The parents hurl invective at our hero as he makes meek apologetic gestures. Only when they have walked away does he realize the package is missing. He looks in horror out the window and sees the corner of the package peeking out from the stroller. But just as he's about to get out of the car and chase after the stroller, the enforcer appears. A nasty man with a facial scar who, earlier in the movie, we saw kick a puppy just because he could. The enforcer calmly opens the passenger door and sits down. Drive, he says. The boss wants to talk. The movie is called 2DC because our hero's only job is to get the package on a plane to Washington, D.C. And also, it's getting AC to D.C. The pun doesn't work in every language, but it is used in the English distribution. While we waited for a bumbling but affable hero, we worked on diagnosing our battery problems. This is our bum battery, number 19. We're going to try to charge it, see if it actually picks anything up. These are the battery voltages on the left, whatever we had back in February. Then on the right, what we had in March. I have circled number 19 and 18. We knew number 19 was a problem. Yesterday, we tried charging it back up. That's why it's higher on the right than it was on the left. All the other voltages are dropping or self-discharging, which is a thing that batteries do but we have number 18 circled because it looks like it might be self-discharging faster than the rest so we're trying to revive this battery 2.2 volts last time we tested today I read 2.05 and i have it hooked up to this power supply and it's already come up to 2.29 volts it's been a few hours on the power supply up to 3.2 volts which is around the other batteries now we're just going to leave it without any load on it and see how much it self-discharges been about 36 hours. Right now it's hovering between 3.17 3.18. Four days since I charged this battery. It's hovering between 3.16 and 3.17. Doesn't really bode well. Looking again at battery voltages, the space of a month between these. Number one only lost 0 0.006 volts, more what we'd expect to see for a quality battery. Number 19, we're gonna need to exchange that one. I have to disconnect the former battery 19. It's nothing personal, battery 19. I think it is personal. We are singling it out. Thank you battery hookup for sending us a replacement battery pro bono. We're gonna try to figure out some kind of adaptive reuse for battery 19 but it probably will not be in a vehicle. It's too heavy to haul around for something non-essential and too unreliable for something essential. Here is battery 19 2.0. This is another box exception. Anything you can do I can do better. We got a YouTube comment that told us the performance of our batteries can be improved. Remove the heat shrink wrap and solder the nickel contacts together. They said a lot also improve the energy density. I'm not super convinced there's a lot to gain out of it, but we do. That's why we're going to try it. So we're going to experiment. We've got Dale Earnhardt, or we don't know who this is. We're going to cut open battery 19. We can't really use battery 19 in the project, but we can use it to further the knowledge of humankind. Let's find out what's inside. Or don't forget, if you're going to open a battery, you want to stab it with a knife. That's step number A. Thank you to Battery Hookup for giving us a replacement battery for free. That was super cool, especially considering it was outside of the warranty and replacement window. I'm gonna, you know, put this down so that I can use two hands. We think of battery as like a singular noun, but a battery actually means a bank of cells. Each individual battery that we have is actually a bunch of smaller batteries, and each of those probably 
probably has a bunch of different cells inside it. When you talk about a battery bank, it's sort of a redundant term, just different orders of magnitude, basically. Under the heat shrink, more heat shrink, an inception of heat shrink and batteries. It's always possible that I'm misunderstanding the comment, but it doesn't look to me like there is a whole lot that actually could be soldered together. As usual, laziness has been proven to be the most viable option. Any one of our cells is made up 20 of these cells, 3.2 volts, 5,000 milliamp hours. That's just the manufacturer's date. If you want to take a manufacturer on a date, that's their number. 3.2 volts, that's the same voltage as this whole overall cell. What that means is that these are wired in parallel because if they were wired in series, it would increase the voltage, but not the amp hours. Because we know the total voltage of the pack is 3.2 volts, means they're wired in parallel to increase the milliamp hours. 20 of these per cell, 32 cells. You take these little things and get enough of put them together, then you get to drive a car. New battery 19. That looks better. 3.266. Oh, nice. All right, no more wood block. So I guess we aren't just singling out battery 19. We are also removing a wood block from our circuit. Going to try charging battery 18, see if we can't get anything out of it. 2.4 volts. It's been an hour and a half, and we've charged up to 2.9. Charged again to 3.2. It's been a little less than a day. The voltage has gone down to 3.1112. Come back to it after 10 hours or so, and it's still at 3.1, so it may not be self-discharging. It's hard to tell. It's clear that battery 18 dropped quite a bit in our test, and we'll probably need to replace it too. We'll keep an eye on it. Meanwhile, sweat dripped from the forehead of the bumbling but affable hero. His legs ached with every step. The bottoms of his shoes were worn all the way through, but the mailbox was in sight. At long last, the mailbox was in sight. It took a long time and a lot of work, but our charger has arrived. Check that out. What kinds of plugs? I don't know what they do. This one is the PP. <laughs> Red is the CP. We got a couple extra cables here too. We have yet to figure out what any of these cables are. I guess some kind of indicator. Wow. Not really sure. <laughs> Whether it is greater or less than 80% and also 100%. Oh, makes a fun noise. It looks like something you screw this. in your dash. Got this guy to plug it into the wall. This is the PP. <laughs> this looks up to the 12 volt circuit apparently. Short circuit is strictly prohibited. Oh, no, that might be the signaling cable. This guy obviously goes to our batteries. It looks like the same connector. But then isn't that the short circuit that we're strictly prohibited from doing? They're probably saying that you can't just jump the pins. This didn't ship with any kind of instructions. It's got some labeling though. Oh, I mean, okay. So we have signal. So both of these are for signal though. Well, this goes out to here, I would assume. It ah, right so that's the indicator. Yeah. I wonder if it needs 12 volt power just to run and this to tell it to charge. We've got the indicator here, but then also the same thing. Read the instructions before operating. What instruction? Oh. <laughs> Maybe these are the instructions. Oh, they must be connected correctly. That's good. I'm glad you've told us how to do that. Plugged into the wall and we got a little green and red flashing light. Now we're gonna plug in the other indicator that seems to do the same thing that that does. It's Christmas time. <laughs> we should see if we're getting anything out of here. It shouldn't be unless it enables on, right? Nope. Nope. I'm gonna try this one with the 12 volt. The multimeter probes didn't fit in the holes, so we had to use some tiny wires. There we go. This might be for powering the auxiliary while it's charging. You wanna be able to listen to the radio while you're charged. <laughs> Not that we'll ever get to listen to the damn radio. <laughs> Could be for powering the charging control module. Oh, Which okay. is not the charger, it's not the VMS. It hooks up to the inlet and handles these signals and turns the charge on or off. This might actually handle some of that, so we might not need to buy one of those. We need to try the enable, right? Yeah, we think it's this one. Before we do that, we probably want to make sure that there's no chance of bridging those. What if it's a conductive tablecloth? If we jump this and the fan turns on and it starts doing something, we know. Wish they'd given us the other end of this connection. Though. I'm gonna short these and see, see what happens. Short circuit is strictly prohibited. <laughs> Didn't do anything. Getting anything. I had to create a login to the DIY solar power forum so I could get my hands on the manual. We could contact the seller, of course, but it's the weekend and the middle of the night in China right now. It's not the exact same device, but I'm hoping the connections are the same. Well, this manual tells us a lot of stuff, including what the product should look like, but it doesn't tell us what all these wires do and how to connect them. According to our BMS manual, the charger negative goes to the P minus, so that's right there. The charger positive goes to the total positive of the battery pack. Right there. 49%? Normally it just huh. says 50. 
So they've actually drained the batteries a little bit. It might need to be calibrated by like charging and discharging a few times. Battery 18 is 3.08. Yep, it is self-discharging. Follow up on PP and CP. We had a look at the pinout for J1772 inlet. Those are the smaller pins on that inlet. For now, we're gonna try doing just a 120 volt test. Plug this in. And nothing. Oh, there it goes. Light is red flashing. Forget what that means. BMS isn't showing us anything different from what it normally does. Oh, we're actually going up. Oh, check that out. Was it really this easy? Battery serial number? How would it know that? I don't know if it does. <laughs> <laughs> that might be the BMS serial number. Oh yeah, the battery voltages are all changing. We didn't need to plug in any kind of signaling. No, it. it's just charging. Maybe that's because it's operating off the AC plug and not off of like a... Off of the high voltage. <laughs> this has other connectors. I expected to have to plug something in. Is that our state of charge? Yeah, it's going to be red if it's less than 80. Once it goes above 80, it'll turn yellow. We've got a third light on this. It's above 50% now. That might be our charge current. Let's see what happens when I unplug it. Drop all right, out. there's the, yeah, the charge current is completely stop now. Let's plug it back in. Current 7.8 now. Now it's climbing. If this balance works, should see it drop in this differential voltage. The idea is to equalize all of the cells. What's going to happen once these reach charge? Yeah, will it shut itself off or not? It seems like this knows state of charge, and I don't know if that's because it's calibrated for this number of cells. I guess we did have to tell them that. We did, yeah. So maybe it, it is smarter than I thought it would be. <laughs> I have installed the daily smart BMS app on my iPad. It is giving us a decimal, so clearly the Apple version is better. It actually shows you the most charged and least charged battery. Battery 18 is the least right now. It's supposed to start flashing yellow when it's about 80% charged. The BMS is reading all four bars, but this still doesn't know what's going on. It may be that some of these communications here that we haven't wired up yet are responsible for that. We got charge off of it last time, but we don't think we got up to 100% state of charge. Right now, our voltage average is 3.35 volts without the charger plugged in. Now we're gonna plug in the charger. Charging now. We think our max 100% charging voltage is 3.65 volts. And it should rest at 3.4 volts. We need to somehow get the BMS to know the correct state of charge, because right now it seems to be pegged at 100, even though there's still more juice to go into the batteries. Batteries have a resting voltage of 3.4. Now our lowest is 3.346, our highest is 3.358, pretty close to 3.4. There's no current coming in, so the charger has stopped. We can also confirm that because the green light has turned on on the charger, meaning it thinks it's done. I'm pretty sure we've reached full charge. And hopefully that means that our battery pack and our BMS is calibrated to understand this is 100% now. What is this even? I don't know. Oh, it's probably our DC. It's either that or the dongle for connecting the. Do you have scissors down here? Or maybe it's just a dong. Uh, this is the weirdest packaging that I've ever seen. It's from some student at the University of California, Santa Barbara. Well, maybe it's pot. <laughs> it's from eBay. I know uh, that. It's whatever <laughs> this I ordered on eBay. Yeah, this is awesome. This is American education. <laughs> The priority mail envelope turned inside. Out. <laughs> this is great. Oh man, that's genius. Oh, there we go. Yeah. So this is how you physically plug in your car. When we remove that, this is going to be able to go in the exact same spot. It'll look pretty classy, actually. What's the brand? Oh yeah, Dorsida. Duo Sita. It stands for <laughs> two Sita. Look at that. So we're taking this inlet apart. We already took this cover plate off after locating the proper Torx screwdriver. And there's this little rubber gasket in here. Took out a screw here. These three larger pins are gonna be for the AC supply. It looks like you expose some copper, push it in there, and then maybe you crimp it here. I'm not really sure. And then we wire these to the charger and the other circuitry that controls the flow of power from the charging station to the charger. We also have an update on another much slower charger. Another project I'm working on, not related to the Yakti, is trying to get a motorcycle running. And in the process, I've been cranking the starter a lot, so I have to charge the battery pretty much every day after I run the battery down trying to get it running. So I put our little solar panel to use. Did this yesterday and left it on there pretty much all day. Charged the battery up. Kind of nice being able to harness this power from the sun instead of having to plug it into the wall. Nothing like watching a solar panel in action. As we deal with high voltage, this could be time for a reminder. These are not how-to videos, and we are not experts. We are hobbyists exploring a project via trial and error. I'm amazed we've gotten this far. Next video will 
we'll add the Sepex field to the circuit. And as always, if you want to help by parts, check out the links in the description. In the meantime, enjoy this dumb thing we did. Today's lesson is all about potential energy. Like when you have an energy gradient, you have a big Power. reservoir of Just energy go. and you want it to flow into something. Another good example is when you have a liquid that's up high. If someone were to like bump it, it would fall. It's nice to have electronics below it to catch it. 